Sulfur and iron are both elements. That means that each consists of only one type of atom. All the sulfur that you see there is composed of the same kind of atom, one with 32 protons in each nucleus. And all the iron that you see there consists of the same kind of atom, an iron atom. We can make an iron and sulfur mixture by putting some iron with some sulfur. When we do so, each of the components of this mixture retains its own properties. The sulfur remains yellow, the iron remains silvery. The sulfur is still non-magnetic and the iron is still magnetic and so on. So a mixture consists of two or more unbonded chemicals. The atoms, in this case, they are not bonded with one another and consequently it's easy to separate the two elements, the two components, in this case they are elements, of the mixture. For example, we could use a magnet. We make use of the physical difference between these two. We place a magnet nearby and the iron will be attracted but the sulfur remain where it is. In that way, we can separate the mixture into its components. Now, if we would heat these two, iron and sulfur, together, then what would happen is that the two atoms would actually bond with one another in a chemical reaction. And then we would get a new substance called iron sulfide. Iron sulfide is also called fool's gold. Now, how does the iron sulfide compound compare with the iron and sulfur mixture? Let's check if we can now separate the iron in there from the sulfur. We take a magnet and we see if now we can do what we did before. Oh dear, no, it doesn't work. From that we deduce that in the compound iron sulfide, the iron and sulfur are actually chemically bonded, whereas in the iron and sulfur mixture, they are not.